Hello everybody and welcome to Teldo Daily number 6 and today I'm going to be talking about the toolkit. And the toolkit is just like the flamethrower, more of a utility kit. It's not a kit which deals huge amounts of damage. It has a lot of defensive stuff on it, a lot of CC and it's really useful and I'm going to explain first of all what the different skills of the toolkit do and then I'm going to talk about a little bit more in-depth stuff just like in my other dailies. So first of all we have the normal auto attack, it's a three attack chain, smack, whack and thwack <laughs> and um, well it's not very useful to be honest as you can see Okay, it deals a decent amount of damage, but you can never afford to actually run up to someone and hit people like that. It's just too dangerous, you will just get destroyed, especially not on a condition build. Um, it applies vulnerability and deals some good direct damage. So it's decent on a power build, but not on a condition build. Um, on top of that, it also heals your turrets which is not very useful in many builds either, and even in turret builds it's not that useful. I mean, you lay down a turret and you just hit it like that. It heals 5% per hit, which is basically nothing, considering how, how how squishy those turrets actually are. So overall, this ability is really not that great. But there's one thing, there's a trait for it, um, power range. It, increase, uh, it decreases the cooldown of your toolkit abilities, which is great, and it makes your auto attack and your tool belt ability throw wrench cripple enemies which can make it somewhat useful but still not for condition builds um, then the next ability box of nails is very useful it has a one second cast time 10 seconds cooldown and it lays on a box of nails and it just cripples and bleeds enemies the bleed effect is not much damage at all as you can see here i mean he was in the full duration of it and he took barely any damage but the cripple duration is pretty long if they take if they if they stand on it for the full time um, it also stacks with condition duration obviously so yeah that's really useful to kite enemies and it's also going to get buffed soon to um, three quarter seconds um, cast time instead of one second so that's really useful then we have the pry bar which is the damage ability of this. It scales amazing with power and condition damage. Um, it deals a lot of direct damage, so if I hit this light dummy here, you can see 1.6k crit for having no power whatsoever. That's good. And it applies 5 stacks of confusion, which is just very powerful. It's a lot of damage when your enemy um, casts spells, especially against engineers and elementalists. They tend to cast a lot of spells in a short amount of time. Um, then we have the gear shield, which is a 3 second duration block on a 20 seconds cooldown, which is amazing. As you can see, it looks like this. You raise this tiny gear shield and you will just block everything. A few abilities can go through blocks, like um, traded marks from necros, and they can actually also interrupt the block. Or um, the next ability that I'm going to talk about can also interrupt this. Um, but overall, the block is really useful and it's it also works when you're contesting a node like you won't stop contesting a node like with other invulnerability effects like elixir s for example then the next ability i'm going to talk about is um, magnet the pull ability just as i said um, it's unblockable and it can interrupt the gear shield but i'm going to talk a little bit more about this later um, it has a range of 1.2k which is a lot. So this is the max range of it, so I can pull this light dummy all the way here. Um, unfortunately, this ability bugs out sometimes. Like you can see, it didn't pull him, the, pull him the full duration. Players usually get pulled the full duration, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just blink to you and then they blink back. Sometimes they just fly into the air. It's so weird. Like uh, it has problems with the net code, I suppose. But um, overall, it's an amazing ability. It CCs your enemy for a second as well, so you can line it up with some other stuff. Um, and we have the throw wrench. Um, it deals a decent amount of direct damage, not useful in a condition build, just for the direct damage, unfortunately. But as I said in my other video, um, it works as a projectile finisher. And, well, for example, if you combine it with your water field and if you stand close to an enemy, you will get some extra regeneration from this. Um, combo. Also, your allies will get regeneration from it. Um, it gives you two seconds of regeneration per hit, and this thing is a 100% projectile finisher, and 
it hits twice. So I got like four, four to five seconds um, regeneration from this combo, which is really useful. Um, if you want to know more about this, you can go back to Del Teldo Daily number five. I'm going to put this into the annotation at the end of the video. Um, yeah, those were all the abilities. And while Toolkit doesn't have an amazing amount of secret tricks, at least I don't know an amazing amount of them, but still there's a few th advanced things I can tell you about. So, okay, a very simple thing, which almost everyone knows. It's also an obvious combo. You can pull an enemy, and then you can use your pry bar to just hit the enemy right away. Um, when you pull someone, he will be CC'd for like a second, so you can hit other stuff easily on your enemy. Um, you can also combine it like with other stuff. You could, for example, lay down a big bomb and try to pull your enemy into the big bomb so he gets knocked away. That's just stuff um, that you can try to do, but it's not super reliable. But overall, it's just an amazing ability, and you should try to combo it up with some other stuff. It also just puts your enemy out of um, out of position. So, like, if in a team fight, an SPVP, for example, if you can pull a necro, and necros are easy to pull because they don't have vigor and they don't avoid a lot of stuff, um, he can be out of position and can just fo be focused down right away. And if you manage to get some amazing pulls in a team fight, that can just make the difference of a win or a loss. Um, so yeah, this ability is really good, and especially it's useful against Necros, for example, if they are low HP and they're on max range. You can just um, predict their heal ability and you can pull them and interrupt the heal ability, because enemies like Necros won't expect to get interrupted if they're at range and no one is on them. If they try to heal, you can just easily start the magnet and try to pull them quickly. Um, also another thing, um, as I said, it's unblockable, so you can interrupt Guardian heals with it. The Guardian heal blocks everything, so it's usually not really interruptible. With this thing it is, it has the same cast time as the Guardian heal itself, so if you cast it a little bit before the Guardian heal, you will get the interrupt. You have to predict it, but um, sometimes it works, like you just have to, you just have to gamble a little bit, and if you actually get the interrupt on your enemy, it's absolutely worth it. It's huge amount of pressure. And if you don't interrupt the heal, the short amount of CC that you get from it, the short knockdown, is already worth the cast time. Um, your conditions will keep ticking and your allies can hit the enemy during it. Um, but there's another thing which is really useful about this, like something that I don't see any engineer ever doing. Um, so if you're playing against someone who, and you know that this person is decent at the game, he will see this cast time and um, he will dodge to just avoid the thing. As soon as you see this and dodge, you will, like, no matter when you dodge, as soon as you can see it, you can dodge right away and you won't get hit by the thing anymore, by the pull. Um, so what you can do, you can start pulling someone and then you can use your stole, um kit thingy here, this, this button here, to cancel it. Then your ability will go on a 4 seconds cooldown, but you most likely baited out a dodge out of your enemy. And, well, that's already worth it. I mean, if you would have casted it through and the enemy would have dodged, it would have just been on a cooldown and you would have gotten nothing out of it. But this way, you have your ability ready again. And that's just amazing. I mean, you can fuck with the brain of your enemies like that. Uh, it might not sound like it's actually it actually works like that, but you can believe me, it really fucks with enemies. So if you actually pull them, and then cancel it, and they dodge, they think, okay, awesome, his pull is out, I don't need to worry about it anymore. But if you pull him after four seconds again, most people just have this brain lag then, like, they don't know how to react to it, and it, it really is true, like, many people, I, I tried it many times, the second pull against most people just always hits. And you could just pull them, they won't be able to react to it most of the time, and then you get the second pull pretty much guaranteed. And, um, yeah, that's a huge amount of pressure. As soon as you get the pull, you can combo it off with your pry bar again, and bam. But even against players that know how to, um, that, that know how that you do this trick, I mean, I don't see any many people do that, but um, some of my friends that I've been dueling against, they know that I do this trick. Um, even if they know it, they will be, like, they will be scared of this all the time. I actually dueled Seth a little bit, which, uh, He's a mercenary from my old team, and he was complaining and screaming during the duel because I used this pull so many times and he thought it had a super short cooldown or something. And if I actually pull him, 
it, the duel, it just got a huge advantage in that duel. So he's super scared and he just constantly wastes his dodges and everything. And sometimes I just pull him anyway because he thinks that I would, um, that I would juke him again. But you know, you can do some tiny mind games with this, and it's very useful. You should definitely try that out. Um, it's one of my favorite tricks on the toolkit. And, well, that's there aren't too many other things really about the toolkit. There's one thing with the gear shield, it's a three second block. And, well, enemies know that the block will last three seconds. What is this? Am I disconnecting or something? Oh no, I don't think so. I think this is just a lag. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, enemies will know that the block lasts three seconds. So, imagine you have a warrior on you with a hammer. He will wait until this thing is over, he will just run after you, and he will stun you right away after this is over. So um, when you use this thing, don't ever just try to use a damage ability right after or something like that. Use something defensive after you had the block, because people always um, always prepare something for right after the block to, to damage you. So use the dodge roll or switch to your um, normal shield and use the static shield to block again right away. Um, I like really most of the time you just get hit really hard after the, you use the block, so definitely try to keep that in mind, and you will be able to avoid a lot of stuff. Getting healthy. But yeah, um, that's about it for the toolkit. Well, box of nails, just use it for kiting all the time. Pry bar, a lot of extra damage. The block is amazing. Magnet pull can be used to um, you can cancel it. Etc. Etc. Um, it's an amazing skill. It offers a lot. And yeah, tomorrow I'm going to be talking about the build that I'm actually running here right now. It's a solo queue build. It runs grenades, bombs, and toolkit. I will explain a little bit more about this tomorrow. And the day after, I will pick a match and I will commentate that match, a solo queue match of me playing this build. And also tomorrow and the day after, which is the um, the 5th and the 6th of February. I will be streaming on my Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash teldo with double O. And I will be playing some solo queue with this build there. So if you're interested in this build, um, you can just join me on Twitch and see it live in action. And yeah, see you guys tomorrow with my new build.